using it as well. And it is a great tool to use, especially in these uh, current times that we're in. So the agenda today, hopefully, uh, if you can't see my screen, just let me know. Um, everyone should be seeing it. We're going to talk about what is Tremble Sync Manager, the parts of Tremble Sync Manager, how to get it, um, creating a project using Sync Manager, as well as creating a job inside of Sync Manager, downloading our jobs to the, from the cloud to the controller, uploading from uh, the controller to the cloud. And we'll also talk about ex the uh, import export exchange between Trimble Business Center and Sync Manager. And then once we've gone through all of that, I will do kind of a live demonstration showing how all of these uh, pieces fit together and work. Um, at the end, we'll also have time for questions and we'll go ahead and unmute and allow everyone to uh, ask questions and we'll answer those as best as we can. So what is Trimble Sync Manager? Trimble Sync Manager is, it's a geospatial utility within Trimble. Um, it allows us to basically use the cloud to transfer our data from the office to the field or from the field to the office. It does require uh, Trimble Access 2018 or newer, and it is really designed for the Windows 10 environment using the newer controllers. So the system, uh, on the sides, you see the yellow icons. Those are Trimble Business Center. And then in the middle is your Trimble Sync Manager and the cloud part of it. Um, the Business Center piece is more on the peripheral. You don't have to have Trimble Business Center to use Sync Manager. Uh, but if you have it, it does allow for some additional uh, data transfer options. And why use? Uh, Sync Manager, basically it's, it's fairly easy to use. It's consistent, real-time data transfer. You can send your, um, you just tell it to upload or download. It takes a minute or two and that information is, it, it is either on the cloud or, or downloaded from the cloud rather quickly. Um, you don't have to take thumb drives and, and plug them into your collector to transfer things. As anyone who has a newer, collector a TSC 7 or T10 controller has learned the Windows 10 background or environment doesn't allow us to connect our controllers to our computers. So getting that information from the controller into the office it requires, you know, thumb drives, emails, all of this. This takes that out of the equation and makes it easier to get that data into the office. Um, it also allows you to store your data on the cloud, as well as it'll be stored locally on anywhere that it's been downloaded, whether it's on your controller where you collected it, or if you've downloaded it to your office machine, um, you have that additional safety net of knowing that your data is on the cloud so that if something were to happen, you're in the field and something happens to your controller, your data is backed up as long as you have uploaded it to the cloud. Um, it also allows you to monitor the progress of your field work from the office. It's as simple as having the field crew just upload the, the files and you can look at it. Great way so that you can eliminate bouncing back and forth uh, from the field to the office to verify things are done. They just upload it to the cloud. They can stay on site. You take a look at it real quick and verify that the work is done and before you uh, have them return. So where all the pieces fit together, you're sitting in your office at your, your, uh, your PC, you, if you're using Trimble Business Center, you can use that, or, but you don't have to. Um, you synchronize that information and send it to the cloud using uh, Trimble Connect Business. The cloud, you then go to the field using your field software, uh, Trimble Access 2018 or newer. And you can then download and receive that information in the field or upload it back to it. Um, and it, this picture just kind of shows, you know, I'm in the office to, to in the field and we just transfer things via the cloud. Also comes in uh, very useful when you, uh, you have a field crew, they forgot a file, 
instead of having to email it to them, you can just load it up to the cloud. They download it and it puts the file right where it needs to go and away they go. Uh, so what do you need to use Trimble Sync Manager? Uh, you'll need at least one device with a current Trimble Access software warranty. Uh, you need a Trimble ID, which the Trimble ID is tied to an email. You'll need a Trimble Connect business license and a Trimble to have Trimble Sync Manager installed. So your the, the, kind of the way it works is for every um, software license that you have, a current software license under warranty, you're entitled to have up to three uh, Trimble business accounts. So these will run through an entitlement uh, administrator. And what you do is you tell us who you want the entitlement administrator to be. That administrator, it's they're going to be assigned um, to that serial number and they will then assign the license holders up to three license holders per device that is under under warranty um, you give us the serial number of the device and the email address for the entitlement administrator we input that information uh, into trimble's virtual warehouse and the entitlement administrator will receive an email from trimble with the instructions of how to set up their account it's rather simple it only takes a few minutes um, kind of a suggestion here, instead of having it, because it's tied to an email, instead of assigning it to just one person's email, you can come up with a generic email, like an admin type email that multiple people have access to uh, for that entitlement uh, administrator. That way, um, if that person is on vacation or unavailable, somebody else can step in and still um, work as the entitlement administrator. Um, if you have multiple controllers with multiple software warranties, we'll just use the example of three, you would then be able to have up to nine um, Trimble, uh, Trimble Connect business licenses, three for each of your controllers. And again, uh, normally we would do, you know, one, have one administrator per company, or if you have a company that has, you know, four or five different offices, it would, we would try to keep it no more than one administrator per um, office because it can get kind of confusing as to you know who's managing what when you start having uh, a different different administrator for each device it can become more of a challenge so we would try to keep that keep all of your controllers under one one administrator per office or per company so to set up your Trimble Connect account, it's rather, um, or to get started, you have to set up your Trimble Connect account, download and have Sync Manager installed on your machine. Once you've done those two things, you create a project, create a job, and download your project and job to your collector. Um, to create the account, again, provide us with a serial number of the device that's under warranty, the email address of the administrator, and they will receive that email and they will get their part set up. They then assign the user or the users. Though they will also need a Trimble Connect account. They can go to connect.trimble.com. And when they do that, there's sign in on the top right. Just go ahead and click on that sign in. It will take them to the Trimble Connect sign in page. If you don't have an account, you can click on create new Trimble ID and it will walk you through. It takes a couple of minutes to fill it out. It goes, goes into Trimble. Trimble will then send you an email back confirming the creation of your account. Otherwise, just type in your email address and password um, to log in. To install uh, Sync Manager onto your, your PC, it will automatically install when you install Trimble Business Center 5.0 or newer. It automatically installs with that. If you can also put it onto any Windows 10 uh, device, so you can install this on your um, TSC 7 or T10 tablets. Uh, you can go to the Trimble site, and the address is there. It, you go in there, and you can download it directly to your device, um, which is good because 
to use the cloud, the project has to be created in Sync Manager. So if you're in the field and you don't have a project that's connected to Sync Manager, but you want to send the information through the cloud, you would need to have, um, you, if you put Sync Manager on your collector, you can then go in there, create the project, and be able to upload your files to the cloud. Um, when you do go to the download page, just make sure you choose the correct version, whether it's uh, 64 or 86, and it will install it. So when you first open Sync Manager, it will take you to your sign-in page, and then from there, you go into your projects. Um, I'm just going to kind of explain what's going on in the software real quick. So from the projects page, it shows all of the projects you have open. Um, you have a couple of choices. There's a, the new button in the top left allow you, will allow you to create a new project. You can um, change the display between a tile or list view. You can also add, a, a, as you see, I've got uh, one project that has a, a photo as the background for an image. I can select my project or delete a project. The uh, little trash can, you can see my mouse here. If you were to click on that trash can, it would allow you to delete that project. So if you've got something that you need to clean it out, you can do that. Um, also along the top here, some of the different icons, you've got the little head and shoulders here that takes you to your, your um, user profile. Next to that is the settings. Um, and then the question mark would be the help menu. That help menu is very intuitive. It will go to where you are in the software, similar to Trimble Access, and it's a very useful, uh, a very useful tool. It, once you um, either create or open a project, it takes you, you have some uh, properties. And if you look in there, um, obviously for a new project, you would name your project. You can put in a description and describe the project area or a customer reference you can put in those are optional fields for you to put information in and then underneath details um, there's some things in there as well for the template reference reports in in your team um, and then additionally you can zoom in to your location so i've got it zoomed in here to the st louis area so if your project you can just zoom that into your project site and it will when you go into Sync Manager, it shows where your project is. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the details a little bit. So your project details, the first one would be your template. This allows for you to uh, bring in job templates or create a job template from an existing job or JXL file. Um, I'm a huge fan of using templates. Um, they allow you to make things more consistent. Create When you create your jobs, it takes a lot of the, um, error out of it if you're using a template everything's already set you choose that template it can link control files and all kinds of stuff through your template so i'm a huge uh, proponent for using the templates your reference you can bring in additional files that will be referenced in the project these files can be accessed by any job in that project so if you've got a master uh, control file on a csv you can have that file in there and any job in the project would have access to it. And just as a tip, if there's something incomplete or wrong on a CSV file that's in there, if you delete the file from Sync Manager, just take, just completely delete it, then correct the file on your um, PC as long as you name it exactly the same as what it was named before, when you put it back into Sync Manager, the next time those controllers download from the cloud, it will correct everything in those uh, in, in their files, but it has to be named. I, the uh, naming has to be identical. So, under the reports, you can also download and add style sheets. You can bring in any customized style sheets that you've created. You also have access to uh, Trimble's list of additional style sheets. You can select those, and that will then download those onto the controller as soon as they um, download or download the project from the cloud. And it's completely customizable. And then the team, you can go under the team tab to manage your invite new users or um, and assign them roles, the options on a role, either an admin or a user. 
Um, and then you can also remove project members. So if somebody's moved on and they're not going to uh, be working on that project anymore, you can take them off as well. So once you've created a project in Sync Manager, you have the option to create a job. You don't have to create your jobs in Sync Manager um, in order to be able to upload and download from the field. You only have to create that project in Sync Manager, but it allows you in the office additional, um, the ability to create the job files and send them to the field as well. Um, and as you see on my screen, the, the project shows the project name and then the job name, it will default uh, to a date. It'll be in the day, month, year format. That's a default name. You can change that to whatever you want. Optional fields, putting in a reference number and description. You can also now have assignees as well. Um, so you can add members and adjust their role, whether it be user or admin in the job as well. Your job and project files boxes, those allow you to click on the plus sign and then search your computer's directory for the files you're looking for. Or if you're using, if, if you prefer to um, drag and drop, you can also drag and drop into those boxes and it will link any job or project files to your, to your job. And then similar to on your controller, the units, coordinate systems, uh, Kogo, other, and your job tabs, all of those, you can go in there and edit and adjust your, all of that information. Once you're satisfied, down on the bottom right, you just click on create and it will actually create your job. Um, another way to create your job is to actually send the data from TVC to Sync Manager. Um, you simply go into Business Center, select, uh, you can select from Business Center, at which point up here in the top left, it says send to sync. If you click on send to sync, you will see a dialog box on the right hand side pop up with what has been selected. And then you have to select add selection and it will put it in your selection summary. You then click on the send button. And it sends it to, uh, to the project that you have open in sync. When you go into your sync manager, it will come up. You'll see a message in there that there's new um, data that's been received. Click on apply and it will take you in to the job creation. You uh, finish the required fields in the job creation and then on the bottom right, click on create. And that will create the job. It's, everything's done and set. And inside of your project folder, you would then see a job with the, uh, the job number and it's ready to be downloaded onto a controller and go. Um, as far as on the field side, you just, you would then download your project. You open up access on your controller. So looking at this uh, screen right here, there are no projects on this controller. And on the top, this icon here along the top, um, this Trimble Sync icon is gray. That tells me I'm not co uh, connected to Trimble Sync. Manager, I would click on that icon. It takes me to a login page. Um, I wanna go into Sync Manager. I put in my email address and password, and I like to stay signed in myself, um, but you can uncheck that box. That way if somebody else picks it up, they have to know the username and password. Once you sign in, you will see your projects page and right here you see that sync icon is now colorized. And that means I'm able to upload or download from the cloud. Inside of that projects window, I also have my, um, you see the different projects here with a cloud and a down arrow. That down arrow means there's information on the cloud that, ne that needs to come down to the controller. You select the file and then click on download and it will download from the cloud. And you see that down here. Once click download, it comes up, um, choose the files you want to download, hit download again, and it will take you into um, your jobs. 
And once you've downloaded everything, this bottom screen here, it shows a job file that has been brought into the controller from, uh, this one was from Trumbull Business Center, back down to a controller. You're in your measure screen, everything's been done. All you have to do is either connect to your total station or to your receivers and go to work. So you go out, you do a bunch of work, collect a bunch of data, and it's you're done for the day. It's time to go back um, and upload the information. So if you go to your job, um, when you go back into the job tab, it shows here this cloud with an up arrow. That means I have information on my controller that's not on the cloud. So to upload it, there are two ways to do this. Um, the first way would be on the top right hand side of the screen, there would be three dots or there are three dots. You click on those three dots and then go to upload. The second option is underneath your jobs, uh, job assignment, it says status. There are, if you hit that drop down arrow, there are three choices, new, in progress, and field work complete. If you change that to field work complete, it will automatically upload everything in that job file to the cloud. If you change it to in progress, it does not up, uh, upload anything. It only uploads when you say field work complete. And then once you've selected upload, the information goes to the cloud. If you were to go back to Sync Manager at that point, the information would be there and you can click on it to review your, um, review your job in the office. Also, it, um, if you have Trimble Business Center open, when you open, once you've uploaded data to the cloud and you're in Sync Manager, if you download that information, to, um, it'll give you the option to uh, import directly into Trimble Business Center. So to get this in the bottom right, the import to Trimble Business Center tab to be there, you have to have Trimble Business Center open in the background. But once you do that, you click on import to Trimble Business Center, and you then go back into Business Center, you'll get this message, and it'll ask you, what do you wanna do with the, the data, import or cancel? If you choose import, it will bring that data back into, uh, or bring that data into Trimble Business Center. So that's kind of a quick overview of uh, everything that's going on, what it is, and and everything that's going on with it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and go through from the office, getting the, creating an, uh, a project and a job, bringing it from business center, going out to the field and getting it all the way back, kind of a live demonstration here. So the first thing, when you go to um, sign in to your account, if you don't have one, you can click down here, create new and get your account created. And I usually like to stay signed in. And here in just a minute, it will take me into my sync manager. All right, so if you've never used it before, all you're going to have is this example project. Um, if you've already created your own projects in there, you'll see a couple projects in there. I could open up one of those projects and edit it. But for this, we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. Um, actually before that, just show you the difference between the tile and the list view. It's just how you prefer it. Um, I like to see big, bigger icons. It's easier for me to see, but let's go ahead and create a new project. We have the region, we can change that between North America, Europe, and Asia. Um, we'll leave it at North America. Here under your license, this is where you would select your Tremble Connect business. Um, I have a little bit different uh, licensing than, than most, but then you hit create and you'll see on my screen, it's creating a project called the Sync Manager Demo. If I wanted to put a picture in here, I could actually, once my computer catches up, click on this. Um, where it says select an image, 
I'm going to go back to my projects page. Um, I'll select an image and I can choose, um, we'll pick the, the arch and open that. And it then assigns that photo. Um, anything you have loaded, any, any imagery you have loaded on your machine will, you can put in there. All right, so once we're in our project, if you want to, uh, this is all you have to do inside of Sync Manager to use the cloud. You can then download this onto your controller, do all of your jobs, create your jobs on the controller like you've been doing for years, um, and then still be able to upload that information to the cloud. If you want to do more, you can do more in here. Uh, it's kind of at your uh, user to find how, you know, how much you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the properties of my project here. It allows you to zoom in um, this map here. I can, and I'm going to try to zoom in on downtown St. Louis here. And it will leave that set every time I go into this project, it's going to come to this area. And again, you can put in your any description or customer references that you want. Those are optional fields. You don't have to put anything in there. The template would allow me to bring in, I, if I hit the plus, it'll go to my computer and tell me to look for a job file or a JXL file that I want to bring in here as a template. Um, or if you're running multiple screens, you can drag and drop files in here as well. Um, reference files I can bring in here as well kind of the reports and the, um, the team. And you can invite, multi, if you have a list already, you can invite multiple users at once or you can do them one at a time. It's real simple. And I'll invite Kelly um, just to his email and I'll go ahead and make him an admin. And then he would receive an email saying he's been invited to this project and he'll show up here as a project member as well. Um, once you're happy with what you've set your project to, you can then create your job if you wish to. Um, two ways to create the job, you can just create it here or you can send from Trumbull Business Center. The job name defaults to a, a day, month, year format, but we can come in here and change this anything you want. Um, the reference and description are optional fields. And again, you can assign members here under assignees as well. If I kind of like I did under the projects tab, I can do it here um, as well. I can also drag and drop files. It's bringing in the project file geoid 12b. Um, I can bring in others um, and then job files. Click on my units. The unit system box if I hit that drop down, the choices are U.S., metric, and imperial. Uh, when I change this to U.S., most of, almost everything in here will change to U.S. norms, but not everything. Uh, make sure you scroll down. Oftentimes, the station display will come back at uh, one plus zero zero. So make sure you are scrolling similar to Access 2018. The coordinate system. If you wanted to change that in here, you can click on that as well. Um, I have it set to Missouri, uh, Missouri East. I'll leave it there. Um, in my other settings, once you're satisfied, your settings are, are good, you click on Create. and it will create a new job file. It takes it a minute here to actually create it. Um, once it's done, we'll go back in and you'll see that the job file named test will be sitting there in my project folder.
All right, so now inside of the, the sync manager demo project, we see the job test. Um, the other way to create a job is to actually go into Trimble Business Center. And I'm just gonna open a, uh, a job I have in here and I will export from TBC to Sync Manager and it's very easy. So this is just a project I had from a training that I did a few months ago, um, created a surface and then put in, they, they wanted to lay out a building pad that they were actually going to uh, put in at a training center I was at. Um, so to send it out, I would just select the, what I want, go up here under the home tab where it says send to sync. It then shows I have 190 items selected. There are, um, there's a DXF with four lines and one surface. If I click add selection, it shows, um, it's gonna send 185 points, four lines and one surface to sync manager. And then I click on send. It immediately on its own popped up because sync manager was open that I have something to bring in. What do I want to do with it? I will then choose apply. I want it to go to the sync manager demo project. It, since I changed my job names to test, it's now calling this one test two. And you see that it um, is bringing in a DXF a terrain model, um, my geoid model and the feature code library. It's bringing all of that from business center straight in. I just need to go through and make sure the rest of my things are set correctly. So the units, um, we'll change them to US. It wants a project height. So put in the approximate average elevation for your project. And then just check the other settings to make sure things are correct. It had it set, my Kogo set to ellipsoid. I wanna change that to grid. And once you're satisfied, click on create. And it'll, again, take it a moment here to do everything it needs to do. And I now have two jobs under this, uh, under this project. So, the office end, everything's pretty easy. You get out to the field or your, you, your field crews get out to the, uh, the job site and they want to download this information. We'll just open um, access. So you can see here, I've got, I'm not connected. This is grayed out right here. So if I click on that and log in, I now see this uh, sync manager icon is colorized and I have a bunch of different files that I've been messing around with practicing, but my uh, sync manager demo, it shows up here with a cloud and a down arrow. If I click on that, it gives me in the bottom right, a download and I will download that project and it will bring the entire project down and then I will be able to download the jobs individually. So I now have two jobs to choose from. If I uh, test two, I'm gonna download that one first just because it has a bunch of data in it. And you'll see when it takes me to the measure screen, um, that data came in um, and you can go to work. So you could bring in all of your drawing files and your, your terrain models and everything else. You can bring those in here, they will come in. Um, you can still manage them under your 
job properties like you've always done, but otherwise you're ready to go to work. Um, I'm going to go back under my project and now I'm going to download this second job that has nothing in it. So I can just kind of, um, I'm going to key in a couple of points and show you how to take it from the field back to the cloud and into Trimble Business Center. So here I, I have a just a blank job. There's nothing in it. I'm going to go ahead and key in some points. And then oops. So I have four points and, you know, it would be the same if I was out there actually taking topo shots or, or doing any, any work, um, all that, those points come in, I'm done for the day I can go back to my job. So the menu job, choose the job that, um, has that data, um, so my test job, it has the cloud with an up arrow. If I change the status to field work complete, it will automatically upload. Otherwise, I can change it to in progress. It doesn't send anything to the cloud. It shows it's still there. I can go to menu, upload, and it uploads the job. And now I see a cloud with a check mark that tells me that everything is in sync between what's on my collector and the cloud. And I'll go ahead and uh, this one, we didn't do anything in, but we opened it. So it wants to be uploaded as well. I'm going to go ahead and not do that right now. Uh, minimize this. I'm going to go back into sync manager. Uh, if I hit the refresh button here, it should show my test that I just changed to in progress. It shows that here. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, open that. and. While that's doing, I'm going to go back into TBC and create a new uh, project. And there's nothing in this. And then I'll go ahead and go back into Sync Manager. It shows because I have TBC open, I can import to Business Center. As soon as I downloaded that job um, from the cloud, I click on import to TBC, this little pops up tell, telling me there's data um, from sync that wants to go into TBC. If I go into TBC, this tab pops up and I'm going to tell it to import. And if I go to the plan view, you can see that those four points that I just keyed in on uh, my controller come into TBC. So summarize real quick, um, Sync Manager, it's basically a free cloud service for anyone that has a valid software warranty for Trimble Access. It allows you to upload and download remotely, uh, integrating the office and field softwares. And it kind of, especially in the current uh, environment it allows for uh, to, uh, allows us to limit our person to person interactions um, where the field crew doesn't necessarily need to come into the office they can receive and send their information um, from the field so it, that is basically everything um, I have for the class um, I am going to go ahead and put our contact information up and I'll leave that on there for now and go ahead and unmute everyone so that we can uh, talk and ask questions.
All right, so everyone is should be unmuted. If we have any questions, uh, okay. well, take care. Ross, I see you have one in the chat. Um, big files, I know we have had people that are transferring uh, the scan data and stuff back and forth, and they've been fairly successful with it. I, I've never been told of an exact like size limit, um, but I do know that we've had some customers that have tried some multiple gig files and uh, have really struggled with that, mainly I think because of the images, multiple images and stuff. So. I guess there's no real good answer other than maybe try it and uh, see what happens. Um, but, but the SX10 data will go over along with some of the photos, but I don't, I don't know what the uh, size limit is on that. Yeah. To echo what Kelly just said, I, I had one really large uh, bridge scan um, with I think MoDOT that I was trying to do. I had a little bit of trouble with, but we scanned way more than we needed. Um, but most everything else that we've done, I've had no problems. That was the only file I've had any trouble with, and I don't know what the limit is. Any other questions or? Hey, Scott, this is uh, Sean Chard with Trimble. Yes. Great job um, today. Um, I was just wondering, do you get many questions uh, from customers that, that are more in line with um, the number of users uh, so if they have like maybe anywhere from four, ten, maybe ten plus crews, they have a maybe you should put some people on mute. Go ahead and mute everybody, Scott. Um. All right. Um, hey, Sean, if you could ask that question again. Yeah, I, uh, I unmuted myself. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Uh, so um, when, it, when it comes to um, firms that have like four uh, crews, 10 crews, 10 plus crews, uh, they have a number of logins. Um, do you get uh, many questions about how they manage their account uh, through license manager? I haven't seen uh, many of that. I, I think uh, one of the other folks on the support team had a question. I think it was uh, up in Nebraska um, that was having some issues with one of the larger companies. Um, Levi, are you on the call today? Guess not. Um, and I don't know, Kelly, you may remember um, a couple of weeks ago, Levi had an issue with that. Do you, I don't know if you remember any more of the specifics. Well, um, where I was going with this uh, was really um, in that th the presentation that you gave was absolutely wonderful um, and it's very informative and I appreciate you doing that. Where, I, where I've seen kind of a couple of uh, questions and more support-based stuff is when, uh, when, a, when a customer purchases you know, a data collector with Trimble Access, they get, they register that, that serial number and they create by an email an account you know, for a customer and allows them, allows them to manage their licenses. And, and if they have multiple data collectors and they have multiple um, emails, you know, that they can add multiple users, you know, but there's only one administrator. And I just was wondering if you actually really get many questions about that because um, it's, there's a matrix basically there. It's not complicated, but there's a matrix It's free for, uh, for a year because of the data collectors under warranty. Um, and it gets 
a little bit more complicated than that. You don't have to pay for this service. However, if you have more than one project, then you do. So, um, right. So uh, if you, but customers, when they, when they buy a data collector, it is free for that first year. And then if you're under warranty, then it's free, you know, as long as you're under warranty. Uh, but then you're managing licenses. And I was just wondering if you take a lot of support calls, you know, what that does. Uh, haven't up to this point taken much on that. Um, again, the, it's still fairly new, I guess, you know, two and a half years or so. Um, and it's, not that new anymore, but um, I don't know. I can't speak for the rest of the Siler area. Um, I know Kansas, Western Missouri, we don't have a lot of people using it. Um, I really like it. I've, I've played around with it quite a bit. Um, and the people that I, the customers I've seen using it have loved it, but they haven't been using it long enough to run into issues with the warranties needing to be, um, extended yet i guess would be the well I, I was just more curious and i really wanted to just touch on the topic of you know uh having team members like like you put in kelly you know having multiple team members uh, and i see you have a question in your chat room about oh. you know you have multiple crews i mean if, once you put in that person's email i mean you are just sending it out to everybody who's part of that Part of that project um, it automatically once they log in with their email they automatically get this data which is the best way to share it right right i mean yeah so on that the question about the uh, staking crew uh, the multiple crews if because you can have up to three uh, licenses per device um, and you can log into your account from any any windows 10 device so it doesn't follow necessarily the warranty of the device you're on. So it is a really good way to get that information out to multiple, uh, multiple crews at once. Um, even better if you have obviously multiple devices that are under uh, warranty, but yeah, it absolutely be a great way to get that out to, I mean, virtually everyone that you can get a license for. This is uh, so one of the things in Omaha. Uh, I've had one customer that has, they, I think they have 25 collectors, um, that they are working on getting into the system. Um, and so it's, it turns out to be a lot of users. Um, as far as their warranties, the only issue we had was, um, for a set of collectors, they had bought the warranties through somebody else. Um, so there's just a little bit of talking to different um, different dealer or distributor um, to get that figured out. But once we got it figured out, uh, the big thing for that we figured out a workflow for not sending everything out, like every job to every user, is making sure that you assign um, make sure that you assign just that job to those users, and then you can add them in as they go. So for them, each project manager is doing their jobs and assigning them that way because it could get to where, um, as Steve was talking about, um, uh, getting data out to multiple crews is good, but it could also be a little bit of overload if you have a large company and everybody's getting every job. So just kind of managing uh, what my customer has been working on is managing who gets what jobs um, and trying to keep that in line and then distributing that job of assigning people to the project managers themselves. So this is Kelly out of the St. Louis, the Siler St. Louis office. Um, something to keep in mind is, is there's different ways of doing all of this. Uh, we've got some users that have created generic accounts and they'll just have a login for the collector itself called like Siler one for one collector, Siler two for another. And those just continually stayed logged in with that user that that address associated with it so as they're uploading stuff they know that this is like collector one and collector two collector three um, something that everybody else does a lot of other people are doing is each user has their own email address to sign so if they are bouncing around from collector to collector then they'll just punch in that collector then you could go just to that individual user when you're sending stuff to sync manager so 
I mean, there's no real right or wrong method to doing this. Um, it's whatever seems to work best for you at the office or works best for your field guys as well. And then one other thing to consider that uh, I have run across is um, the when Scott added me to the users list, uh, he marked me down as an admin. Um, something that we've discovered through some conversations with Siler or with uh, uh, Trimble team and uh, particular users is if you assign someone as a user, you have to make sure that you are assigning them as a user to that project as well, because uh, the, the data will still go to the field. They can go out and they can work in all that data. They can add, collect all the new information, but whenever they go to field work complete or try to upload it back to the cloud, it will not let them because it doesn't think that they're an actual user for that particular job file that you uploaded. So, um, you know, we've found, at least in my experience and the customers that are using it, that if you basically put everybody as an admin, whenever you add them to a particular project or whatever, you don't really have these issues that going back and forth. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot that you could lose by making them an admin or a user. Um, the only thing is, it's just some extra steps. If you put them as a user only, you have to assign them to those particular files to allow them to use that file. Not just the project, but the file itself as well. And that's a good point, Kelly. Um, be careful when making people just users because, yeah. That is the one pitfall we've seen. Um, any other questions? Hey, Steve, this is Ross. Uh, I was just wondering, how does TBC handle this conflicting data when you send this to like five different people working on the same project and there's some overlap? How does it handle that? Um. So to be honest, I'm not really sure on the TBC side how great it's uh, or what it's doing. Um, I believe it's only bringing in the new data and Kelly, jump in if you know a little bit more, but my understanding is it's only basically uploading the, the, the changes in the data. So it shouldn't be bringing in, you know, three point number ones. Uh, I would say, Ross, it's going to depend on how your guys, hopefully they're all using different point numbers in the field. Um, you know, that way everybody's not using, you know, point number 5,000 for five different crews. Uh, but I can't imagine it would be, I haven't tried bringing in multiple projects or multiple jobs. Um, I know, you know, from my past experience in TBC, if you brought in something with the same job number or same job name, it would just tell you that some of that data already existed and ask you, do you want to merge it? What do you want to do with it? Do you want to import it? So. I would imagine, again, I, I haven't tested it. You know, that's, that's one of the unfortunate things about uh, Siler in general is, you know, we don't have the everyday usage of it where we're out running projects and importing data continually. A lot of the stuff we do is just, just testing, um, going out and shooting some stuff and seeing how it works and, and goes back and forth. Um, but I would imagine it's no different than bringing in a, a same job file name, you know, same job file with the same name as you would on any other day. If you name it something different, then you know, you'll, you'll get different files each time. So there shouldn't be any issue there other than just asking if you want to merge or unmerge. I don't know, Sean, have you had much experience uh, bringing in the multiple files like that or anything? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a great question uh, because customers are with multi-crew especially, and even not even multi-crew, same crew, but uh, maybe data's coming in throughout the day um, it could be the next day, but you already started a TBC project. So that, that question is a really good one. And um, uh, you can work in the same project uh, and because it's in progress and you have multiple um, uh, iterations of it. So uh, when, you, when, you, when a person in the office, a, a technician, when he creates the TBC project and he imports that data for the first time, uh, you know that it takes the coordinate system and the data. Um, if there's any warnings or errors, you know, you get that, you get to see that dialog box in TBC. And then um, 
if you're working in TVC and you make changes as the technician in the office, uh, and, and then you know, later in the day, you get more data, so you import that one, you get a dialog box that tells you that you already have this data and you need to, you need to say, do I keep the same coordinate system or you know, do I use what's from the field or do I take it what's in, what's in the office? And it tells you keep office updates or you know, take the field. So um, there is a managing, a data management responsibility uh, inside TVC for the technicians. Uh, and I could see if there was multiple crews that, uh, boy, it, it might be a bit of a juggle. Um, you'd have to really have somebody, you know, not too savvy, but you'd have to really know what you've done and what you want to do. Um, so you do get prompted and it'll ask you, do you want to keep the office updates or do you want to go with field? And that's where you need to make your choices. So if you've made changes in the, in the office, then hold the office and then just bring in the, the, the job file or the, uh, the job XML file, and then it'll just bring in the latest data and it'll hold what you've done uh, you know, previously if you've made changes. So that's, that's important. Perhaps maybe that's a, like a separate uh, webinar or even a video or uh, a resource video perhaps uh, from Siler. All right, uh, one more time. Are there any other questions? I think we've covered everything in the chat uh, box. Scott, can you hear me? Yes. This is David in Nashville. Um, <clears throat> I have sent data from TBC to Sync Manager, and um, I've learned to open Sync Manager first and get it to my project. First of all, our projects are our, crew, <clears throat> our crews, and then the jobs go underneath each crew um, is how we have it here. Okay. Um, so I've learned to open Sync Manager and go to my project slash crew and uh and then send it and then that, of course it asks to apply the data then and i go yes and i change the name of the job and go through and, and set everything up kind of like you did but when i go to create it's holding the last job that i created's name what am i doing wrong there uh, I don't know as you're doing anything wrong. So you, when you create, when you bring it in from TVC, it's just going to whatever the last job created's name was in the default. Is that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. I think that's just what it does and just adds the next number in the sequence. Um, yes, sir. I understand it. I mean, it does the same for me. I, I don't, I, I think that's just the default in the software. If I understand it correctly, um, you just would have to go in and manually change the name. Um, if you do nothing, it defaults to the date format. And then once you've changed it, like I did a test it, the next one, it popped up test two, I think. Well, I, I, I go ahead and go into the project, which is the field crew and I go new right. for new job and I go ahead and put the name up there. Okay. Okay. And I, and I go ahead and change the name and I go through and make sure all my settings are correct. And then when I hit create, when it shows up in as a job in the project, it's, the same name as the last job was in the project. So I'm changing it okay. on the front end and then going through, make sure my settings are all this or correct. And okay. then when I hit create, it's still, it's just holding that last job name hey, that David, I did the time, time before. Hey David, it's Kelly. Hey, next yes, time um, when you get something set up or whatever, and you start transferring a couple of those things over, just give me a buzz. Um, and, and we can do one of these meetings or, or log in and we can take a look at it and try to sure. figure out where that's going on. Cause I, sure. I haven't, I haven't heard of it from many other people or anybody else that's using it. Uh, uh -huh. so, you know, we'll just see if we can figure out where, where that missteps taking place. And, uh, and it's pretty, I'm sure it's my fault cause it'll happen five or six times in a row. So it's something that I, I'm sure I'm doing that's, that's creating it, <clears throat> but I'm not sure which step it is that I need to omit or do I need to add another step? step in there to uh to to stop that but i was just curious 
I'll also add, um, uh, Kelly, if you need some uh, additional help with that, you know, Che, uh, the product manager uh, for Trimble Connect and uh, Trimble Sync Manager is really good. I'm not sure if you know him, but we're also looking for information from customers. If there's something that doesn't flow very well in the software, we'd love to hear back. We always, we always want to have the opportunity to create stuff that just has a great workflow. So the input that you're providing right now, uh, the customer in Nashville, that's really good. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. So one last thing just to kind of touch on, uh, Sean, you brought up Che. Uh, I, I was actually, the support team was on a meeting with him uh, about a week ago or two weeks ago. And one of the tabs that Scott showed in there, and I don't know if he can back up to it in the uh, on Sync Manager was the reference tab. Um, anything you put in a reference tab so, you know, I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily always want to send a whole job file every time that goes out. Uh, anything you put in the reference portion of it, you can go in and only download that reference. So, like, if you have a job and the guys are going out, you've recalced some points. Um, yeah, right there where Scott's at. If you, anything you add, so if you want to throw a CSV in there, you can just keep throwing more CSVs in there. And it doesn't have to re-download the job every time. It'll just pop up, it'll show, hey, we've got new CSV files that are available. What do I need to do with these? You say, yep, I wanna download them, and then you download them. So that would be a way to bypass the, creating a job every time you know, you're wanting to send a new file out, you know, go in, hit Sync Manager, create another job, even though it's going for the same one that the guys are already working in. You, know, you don't want a job dash two and a job dash three every time you send a CSV or a text file. So just drop them in there. Uh, let the guys know they're there. When they hit the login, it should pop up and show that there's new files for them to download and they can download those CSV files and it saves you some steps from going through the, the whole job creation process. And also, uh, just before I close this thing out, if anyone has uh, ideas for future possible uh, presentations and, and trainings, please email us um, or call us, email us, and I'll see if I can get back to the uh, contact page. But you can just email us at uh, survey support at Siler Instrument. It'll go to the group of us with, with any ideas, um, and we can try to incorporate that into future possible uh, virtual lunch and learns. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming in today and, and uh, spending your lunch time with us. Um, and if you need anything, please uh, give us a call. Thanks for watching. For more videos, you can visit our tech support page at SilerGeo.com. And be sure to look us up and subscribe on all major social media platforms.